Hello on the internet, Simon Miller here, and we're combining lots of things in one today, and that's a major reason why I want to do this video. Now, you've seen the title, and yes, the idea of it is to focus on everything going on with Mauro Nalo in WWE. Well, I want to make it clear before we get there, I know the facts, I know the truth, I don't know the lies, all I know is what is out there on the internet, but I want to focus on the greater message, simply because I imagine a lot of my audience, a lot of my YouTube subscribers, and please do subscribe if you haven't done so already, we're almost 100,000, which is going to blow my mind when it happens, but yeah, a lot of my subscribers, I will assume, are wrestling fans, because you probably know me for the, for the wrestling content that I do, but also on this channel for the last, what, year, almost two years now, we have been doing vlogs about mental health and well-being and life and what it means to be sad and what it means to be happy and and all these different kind of things now if you have been staying abreast of everything going on in the wrestling news world you will know that Mauro Ronaldo the commentator for NXT not only didn't call his apparent I'm going to keep saying those words because I just think it's smart but he didn't call his apparent matches at Survivor Series and also apparently isn't going to be on NXT later because he felt upset uh, wronged, whichever word you want to use, by a tweet put out there uh, from Corey Graves. Now, the, the tweet will be on the screen now, so you can make uh, your own mind up. And I'm not here to put the blame on Corey Graves. I'm not here to put the blame on WWE or Moranalo. I'm here to talk about the the fallout and the reaction to it. And it's something I'm very, very passionate about, which is why I wanted to do this video. Now, one of the major things that I saw on Twitter, social media, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube was that... Moronalo is, he was too sensitive and it being in the public eye, he should be able to take criticism. And you know what? Both those things are a fair comment to make. If you are a celebrity or you're a public figure, especially in 2019 when the internet and social media are such a huge deal, you have to expect for people to say both good and bad things about you. I get that all the time and I actually feel quite privileged to be in that position because I like to think it means I've you know, manage to have some kind of influence on somebody's lives. And that feels great, especially when you're making content that is out there to be seen by an audience. If people are then coming back at you and thinking, I think this, they're engaged. And it's, you know, and it's two thumbs up. But again, it's not about that. I think we're, we're, some people, not some people, but I think the message was misconstrued, or at least from my point of view. You don't have to agree. Again, we live in a, a free speech world, and I think it's important that we do. You can look at me and call me a bald household and say I don't know what I'm talking about. However, with all of that said, the, the first thing I want to focus on is this idea that somebody can be too sensitive. Can they? Really? And it's not even that. Is it actually a bad thing? We talked about this on the podcast the other day, Simon is Pro Wrestling Show, check it out. We talked about it on the podcast the other day. There is nothing wrong with being sensitive. Being sensitive is an emotion. Being sensitive is part of your DNA. It doesn't mean that it's not something you can't work on. For example, if you go to uh, your place of business every day and someone says to you, oh, those spreadsheets you did, they, they weren't good enough, you need to redo them, and you get offended by that, then yes, maybe that's something you need to look at. However, if you have stressed to your boss, look, I suffer with mental health problems, I suffer with depression, I've got bipolar, I've got OCD, I've got anxiety issues, whatever, it should also be a two-way street. I think we have to start living in a world where it's not a bad thing, A, to be sensitive, but also to treat people that you know are sensitive with a little bit of care, especially when it ties into mental health. Because it's almost as if people don't understand that those that have mental health issues really don't want to have mental health issues. And nine times out of ten, the reason the mental health issues get worse is because you have this fight internally where half your body is like, oh, I just want to feel good today. Why can't I? As the other half goes, well, we feel terrible. And it's this back and forth, this table tennis effect that does just drive you into the ground. And it's awful because you're looking around and you're like, I don't know how to get out of this slump because... There, there is no answer right now. And it's why a lot of people turn to drugs, turn to alcohol, turn to whatever. If somebody puts a magic pill on the table and says, look, I know you feel really awful right now, but if you take that magic pill, you'll feel better. At some point, everyone's got their you know, point where they break and they'll be like, I'm going to take that pill, man. <laughs> I'm going to take that pill because if it makes me feel better right now, that's all I care about. So let's just say that the story is Maura Ronaldo saw Corey Graves' tweet and it affected him emotionally, it affected him personally. I think it's okay to take a step back and go, well, you know what? we knew this was the case so maybe it's all right to tiptoe around Moro maybe it's all right to make sure that Moro's doing all right and maybe it's all right if we have a problem with Moro to send him a text message to give him a call as opposed to putting it on a public 
service like Twitter, which not only gets a load of other people into the conversation, but also tells those people, oh, you're allowed, you're allowed to go and criticize him too, which you are, but you don't want to open the floodgates. Again, the best example, it's been everywhere this week, but it's true. The best example is if someone has a broken leg, you don't go up and kick him in the shin. Now that would make you a dick anyway, because why the hell are you going up to anybody and kicking them in the leg when there's no need? But you know, when something is visual, we as human beings seem to just accept it as, oh, because I can see it, it's there. But if something is hidden away, we're very good at ignoring it, or at least pretending, I haven't got to worry about that. But I think we do. And that doesn't mean society has to break down. Again, the response to this is like, well, how are we ever going to get jobs done? How are we going to do this? Of course, there has to be a two-way street. We have to work together. But the first step in that surely has to be respecting the fact that if somebody has a mental health issue, they probably need to be treated a little bit better than someone that doesn't have a mental health issue. The point there being is that we all have mental health issues. It just depends on where the scale you are. Like nobody watching this video, myself included, has got up 100% of the time every single day and got, oh, I feel whoop de doo Like if the day you were born till you're what, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, you've had perfect days. Maybe the exception does exist. Maybe it's Diamond Dallas Page, right? He's having a ball of a time. But I know that's not true because DDP is so in tune with his emotions and his feelings, he'd be the first guy to say, actually, no. You know, the fact I, the reason I got to this positive state is because I did have so many bad times and I learned from it. So just think about how you feel when you're at your worst. And then imagine someone going through that every single day. The last thing they need is a friend, a colleague, somebody close to them telling them they did a bad job publicly. Like the whole public thing is, a, I don't know, it just... Like, I'm a wrestler, right? And I'm not the best wrestler on the planet. I know this. I probably never will be. And people on Twitter all the time are going, Miller, you're crap as a wrestler. Miller, quit as a wrestler. Miller, you're a bald dick. Yeah, it's all true, whatever. If all of a sudden I see my dad on Twitter just tweet, Simon, you're a rubbish wrestler. Well, I'm like, Dad, you never watch my matches. So that is painfully unfair. At least you know, do your due diligence before you come at me. But my dad has my number. My dad can text. My dad can ring. My dad has been constructively critical of me before or when it's appropriate. And it carries with it. It's just it's all this other baggage, especially if you didn't see it coming. Like if I go back on my computer and I see that from my dad, I'm going to be like, what? What did I do? You know, why, why has he decided to put it in this manner? And it's just, I just, I never understand this whole, oh, well, what do we have to do? Just tiptoe around Moro Nalo. Yes, if it helps Moro Nalo do it. It's not like we don't know this. The man couldn't be more open and he couldn't be more honest about the struggles that he goes through. More power to him. It's really hard to do that. I mean, it's incredibly beneficial. And again, if you struggle um, from any of these kind of issues, please talk to a friend, talk to a family member, talk to a consultant, a doctor, whatever, whoever is, is going to help. But it's okay to do that. And then once we are there, then we can figure out it's okay to work on a case by case basis. It doesn't have to be a blanket rule. But I just, I just sometimes I can't believe that people don't understand. Maybe I should do. I'm being naive, probably. But mental health is a very, very real thing. It really, really is. And one day I will make a video and I will explain why I'm so passionate about it. Uh, I think some people think, I mean, it is personal to me, but it's not as obvious as you may think. You need to be smart about it. You need to be educated about it. And it's okay if you're a bit ignorant, as long as you're also allowed to somebody to try and make you not so ignorant about it. And it's better today because, again, there are more people talking about it. And again, I'm not, I'm not saying that it means you can just call into work every day and say, oh, I'm mental health problems, I can't come in. That's not going to work because the job that needs to be done and you're being paid and you know businesses run on a certain rule set that you need to abide by. But again, in this kind of situation, it's okay to be sensitive. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to go through an episode if that's the word we want to use, not the best one, but it's here now. And for some people to, it's like we've done this a thousand times. When we talk about celebrities, you know, the one that always comes back to me is the, the lead singer of Linkin Park, who I still can't believe <laughs> killed himself. You go back now, you listen to his lyrics, and you actually realize it was a bigger cry for help than you realized. But people will say, well, he was rich, and he was in a, a huge rock band, and he lived his dreams, and he had a family, he had kids. What did he have to be upset about? How preposterous. You're like, well, why don't we twist that? And why don't we look at it? The man was rich. The man was living his dreams. The man had a family. How much must he have been struggling for him to go, you you know what? I'm checking out. I can't do this anymore. I think that's even more. It's, it's awful regardless. But to me, that it doesn't hit me harder because it would hit me hard regardless. But it opens my eyes. It opens my eyes and it makes me think, oh my gosh, it's just, you know, mental health, like a lot of diseases. Well, all diseases and all illnesses, is it doesn't pick, it just, it, there's no rules. It's, you know, it's not exclusive to a certain type of person. It can get everybody. And I guess maybe sometimes it's better to have a broken leg because a doctor can tell you, hey, that broken leg's going to be better in six to eight weeks. But when you're struggling with your brain and you're struggling with anxiety and depression, all those things, there is no, you're going to be better. Eight weeks. Maybe better tomorrow is a good thing. You could wake up one day and go, okay, it's gone. I've managed to sort out 
uh, whatever it was I was struggling with. But it may be something you deal with for your entire life. And really, it will be that way. Because like we've already said, there's no there's nobody that wakes up 100% of the time and feels awesome. Some days you wake up and you feel crap and you don't know why. Some days you wake up and you go, you know what? I'm just going to lie in bed all day. And you lie in bed all day and you don't drink anything. And you don't eat anything. You think, what am I doing? But for some reason, even picking yourself up and walking down the stairs seems like the hardest thing in the world. For my money, when we get to the, the time where we can all lean on each other for that and, and figure out how to make it all work in this crazy thing we call life, uh, the better. So shout out to Mauro Analo. If all the reports are true, uh, I hope you're doing better. I hope you're doing all right. It means nothing coming from me, but we made a video about it. I'd be remiss if I didn't say that. I think Corey Graves on his Beyond the Bell podcast also apologized for all of it. I'm sure he didn't mean to cause all of this too. Uh, maybe not the smartest thing to do, but I don't even know if that's the the chain of events. I'm just saying my major take with what I want the major takeaway of this to be is if Mauro Analo did suffer any kind of mental health setback because of this, we should be as sympathetic and as empathetic and as understanding as we possibly can be. Because right now, wherever he is, again, if it is all true, he's probably sitting around not feeling too great. And to me, that's more important than a wrestling show. It's more important than a tweet. It's just it's just more important than all of that stuff. Like wrestling could go away tomorrow and it would suck because we all enjoy it, but the world would keep on going. Uh, somebody's mental state and somebody's happiness, you can't account for that. Nothing, nothing is more crucial. And on that note, I will salute the camera. That's just a massive rant for me, basically. But I felt like it was important. Like a few people understandably tweeted me saying, Miller, you know, it's wrestling and mental health. You know, what are your opinions on this? And I did address it on the podcast, but I thought it'd be good to sit down and do a whole video about it itself. Again, please subscribe, like, share, comment. You know the deal. Let's keep that conversation going. And I'll see you on the next video.